Have you been with a covert narcissist? One of the things we want to talk about today is covert narcissists and sex. What's actually going on underneath the surface? How is this actually controlling, manipulating? Is it abusive? What's actually going on when we talk about a covert narcissist and sexual relationships? If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness of narcissistic abuse. I help break people free every single day from the trauma bond, from the rumination, from the fog that they're stuck in by being with a toxic person. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations and your guide in the 45 Day Clarity Challenge, you can access at claritychallenge.net to start breaking you free today. When we talk through this piece of sex with a covert narcissist, there's a lot of different things that affect you that we'll dive into and a lot of different pieces that start becoming more manipulative, not just on a relationship level, but on an intimate level. And so when you're with a covert narcissist and when you're being intimate, a lot of times it will become an unsettling experience, like not something that you are used to and not something that feels comfortable. Now, it's going to feel confusing because of the piece of cognitive dissonance, like not sure what to believe, what they say or what they do. This cognitive dissonance piece is very clearly seen inside covert relationships with a narcissist that are sexual in nature because they'll appear charming and attentive, but underneath lies the disturbing reality of how they're actually using you. So when we talk through covert narcissists, they're normally using sex as a means of control. Another way to be able to control and manipulate you. This could be as simple as creating dominance over you. This could be as simple as like trying to hold and push back to try to make you feel better or worse about yourself. There's a lot of different ways that a narcissist will control you, but a lot of times in the covert aspect, you're going to have sex used as a weapon sometimes to try to elicit this control over you, getting you to comply, getting you to do the things that they might want you to do. There's different levels of emotional sexual manipulation. And the hard part is this leaves you feeling like you've been used and emotionally drained. You're going to get to this place where you might move where the narcissist ends up just getting what they want because they're viewing you just as a transaction. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Like I want you to think like you might have a narcissist in your life that gives you affection or gives you attention in intimate moments, but then afterwards like withdrawing completely maybe emotionally distant, maybe like leaving, maybe like just moving away from the whole subject piece of it. And it leaves you just lonely and confused. Then you're like, I don't feel filled because like this just happened and it just felt like it was a good moment. So I lock onto that. But then after it just kind of like dissipates, it just disappears. And this piece of like connection, a lot of times the narcissist is running from because that connection piece feels honest, feels vulnerable, feels like I would be exposed if I'm actually going to interact with that. So like being connected is like filling a bucket in one sense for the narcissist. Then he's like running away with the bucket. Okay, think of it that way. Um, sometimes you're going to have this where the narcissist is using this just for their own means, for their own end. Majority of the time we talk about narcissism, it is focused on him. It is focused on the narcissist, and that is it. Not on anybody else, not anything else, just on him. So a lot of times you're going to see where the narcissist is going to focus so much of getting what he wants, no matter what. This oftentimes is going to lead into the uncomfortable topic that people don't want to hear about that's typically called coercion, okay, or marital rape. A different aspects where the narcissist views you as a transaction, views you as a piece of property, views you as a person that they're allowed to do whatever they want to because you're either married or together. Now, a narcissist doesn't really care whether you're married or not. They just care about, I own you. We're together, so I own you. And so in this aspect, a lot of times there's this entitlement of like, give me what I want. And going through this process, oftentimes, a narcissist will completely disregard your view of no or not wanting to do something and disregard that and continue moving forward. Now, underneath the guise of marriage, a lot of times you have a narcissist that will do coercion or marital rape, where it's just going to happen no matter what you say because, well, I'm the husband, I get to do what I want. When in reality, that's not respectful and that's not honoring to you at all. And that's not really what a marriage is supposed to be. But a lot of times you'll see that in narcissistic households and you'll see that in narcissistic Christian households where they view, well, I have the dominance, I'm the, I'm the better person, all this kind of stuff to lord it over you. Okay, so that happens a lot and it's an uncomfortable topic for a lot of people, but you need to hear it happens. 
you might have experienced this where it just felt like it was your obligation or your duty to be able to put out or to be able to do what he wanted you to do. Like it's not, okay? Because a lot of times a narcissist will use you and manipulate you to get what they want in the moment. So in moving into this, like it becomes very abusive in a couple different ways. Like a narcissist disregards your boundaries and just completely bulldozes, bulldozes over what you actually want or what you need or what you feel. So think of it this way, you might get put into an uncomfortable situation sexually that you didn't want to be in and involving yourself in threesomes. They're like, I never wanted to do this, but I did this. I felt off afterwards, but I want I wanted to do this for him because this is what he wanted. And in reality, like he just got off on it and he continued moving forward. But you felt awful because it crossed your boundaries. Uh, sometimes it'd be like where you don't get a chance to have your needs prioritized. Like it doesn't really matter like how it's working for you or how life is going for you. It just matters about the narcissist. So then he's going to continue to ramp it up gaslighting, manipulating, like doing emotional things to manipulate you during and or after sex. So you're going to see this happen. And this leads to a place where you're feeling the violation and you're feeling the emotional turmoil of being in this toxic relationship and having it affect you at a deeply significant soul level sexually. So think of it this way, like he pressures you into doing things you're not comfortable with. Like I mentioned even before, like even a threesome or like something you're not comfortable with as far as like a sexual act, okay? And then later dismisses your feelings when you're trying to talk about it or when you're trying to say like, hey, that was uncomfortable. I didn't like that. I don't want to do that. Making you question your own boundaries and your own consent. Making you question like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I shouldn't have said no. Maybe I should have should have done this anyways. And the narcissist is going to play that game. He's going to play that game with you to make you feel bad so he can come back around next time and get what he wants. That's all it boils down to is a narcissist looking at what can I do to get what I want? How do I need to manipulate you to get what I want? What do I need to change, modify, or develop, or twist, or, or confuse to get what I want? If you ever remember narcissism, it comes back all to what the narcissist wants. It all rotates and revolves around that. And so doing this and having this happen in the relationship becomes something that affects you very, very deeply. Like it has emotional and psychological effects and physical effects. You know, regardless of how he's actually treating you mentally and emotionally, there's a lot of times where narcissists will practice a lot of things that are very unsafe to you, to other people. Maybe there's cheating involved. There's not protection. Like there's a lot of different things that he won't care about because he only cares about himself. You're going to see this a lot of times with a narcissist that is passing like STDs to other people because he doesn't care. He doesn't care how it's actually affecting the other person. All he wants is what it feels like for him and what he gets in the moment. So even if he knows, hey, I have this, he's not typically going to tell anybody because he just wants to get what he wants to get in the moment. Okay. But this produces this aspect of emptiness where you feel empty. You have low self-esteem and there's confusion about your own desires, your own boundaries, because you're put down. You're told, oh, well, you just, you know, you're not good enough. Well, this is this is what you should do. This is what you need to do. And you're told a lot of things to make you feel awful and inferior unless you do what the narcissist wants you to do. And sometimes this emotional manipulation will play back and forth. Well, he'll like want to break up with you or he'll like pull away from you. And you'll like set up a boundary and he'll be like, no, this is what I want to do. And you're like, no, I don't want to do this. And he's like, well, fine, well, we're not having sex then. And like pull back and try to emotionally manipulate you to get you to be like, no, wait, okay, I'll do it. You know, just to be able to get that consent from you to make you do what he wants you to do. There's like a high a lot of times of the narcissist getting you to break your own boundaries. It's one thing when he breaks your boundaries. It's another thing when he gets you to break your own boundaries. Because then in his mind, he's like, see, I didn't do anything wrong. It's not that big a deal. And she doesn't care because she broke her own boundaries. So it must not be that big of a deal. And so you need to understand like it has such huge, deep effects on you. Like it confuses, it hurts, it messes up so much of people's lives when this is actually happening. And so you might find that after years of being with a covert narcissist, you find it extremely challenging and hard to be able to trust anyone. To be able to enjoy intimacy with a positive person, with a healthy person, and you struggle with this feeling of like, am I actually worth it? We find a lot of people that have been with a toxic, narcissistic, a covert abuser, and they have this question of, am I good enough? Or why am I not worth it? And you start to balance and you start to believe your worth based on that person's opinion. 
And the thing I need you to understand is like your worth is not defined by another person's opinion of you. It feels like it in the moment because that's what you're used to. That's what you see. That's what you have exemplified in your life and being with this toxic person. But your worth is not defined by his opinion of you. Your worth is defined by what you do, by how you actually show up, by the intrinsic value that you have as a human being on this planet. The hard part is often those people will give that away to another person saying, hey, you can define who I am. Let's start working on you defining who you are. To have you actually step up in your power and your certainty and your confidence in knowing you who you are and knowing the direction that you want to go. If I can help you with that, I want to show you those steps inside the Clarity Challenge. It's a 45-day challenge for you to start unlocking who you are, break the trauma bond, learn how to be able to work through the emotional triggers that the narcissist places on you and that you want to react to so that you can be in control of you, of who you are, of the direction you're going to go, and start stepping in that direction every single day. If I can help you with that, go to claritychallenge.net, listen to a couple of the other survivors that have graduated from that challenge, and jump in. That way you can start moving forward in your healing, in your growth, and in your development.